Okay, so it's uh, April the 2nd, Sunday, about 4.10 Austin time, and uh, I'm doing some guitar practicing using my metronome. And quite honestly, Pro Metronome, by the way, a really great app. Uh, a lot of bells and whistles. That might not be for everybody, but really cool app. And I haven't really been practicing a whole lot of music in a while. And I've been noticing the need for that. And as a teacher, it's interesting because I focus so much on teaching that I don't um, practice or play all that much for myself. And I'm having some experiences with students who are feeling a little plateaued and are looking to move to the next level. So I'm recognizing that I'm also a little plateaued and that I could benefit from a musical practice and just recognizing that as a teacher of music, it's important <laughs> that we practice as well. And not just musically, but when we're practicing, we are aligning our internal awarenesses. So it's a really important thing. And I would say it's an interesting aspect where I can pick up the guitar and play, and I can do something that sounds good, reliably, but sometimes I get a little bit bored, to be quite honest, or a little disinterested, because it's rare that I'm doing anything that's that new or anything that I haven't played or heard before. Even though it's always improvisational, it's within a certain uh, capacity that I have available. So I'm recognizing that maybe I've been a little bit plateaued and that it would help not only myself, but my students to practice a little bit more. And then I was practicing and then I thought, huh, what about recording it and sharing it, which is, it has been a vision that I've been thinking about. So I'm inviting you into a bit of a practice session. I don't know how long I'm going to practice for. I generally recommend having an idea. Well, so let's, um, let's listen to myself. I'm gonna do 30 minutes. So, 30 minutes of practice. I have a tendency to <clears throat> float around and um, not be very disciplined with my practice. So I'm gonna do my best to really adhere to something. Uh, before I started recording the video, what I was playing with, uh, finger picking and working on permutations of three fingers, also playing around with quintuplets, five notes per beat. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna return to that right now. I have the metronome set. I was working at 72. <clears throat> that was a little swift for what I was trying to do. So I'm gonna bring it to 60. And I'm just gonna practice and maybe I'll chime in a little bit and share a bit about my process and, and yeah, so there we go. back and forth with these three fingers, but with quintuplets. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, 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 one. And 
I'm not quite aligned with it. So that's what I was practicing, is trying to really get aligned with those fives. Also trying to count them while I'm doing it out loud, which is a challenge. So that's where I am right now. And one of the ways, one of my challenges is to focus on practicing and not teaching. <laughs> I can't help myself, but how I'm aligning with the five is I'm getting the first five aligned so the, 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 next, the one beat of the next five cycle aligns with a click. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. And I'm aligning that. And then I'm moving it forward to see if the next series aligns with the click, which if we took it off the metronome would be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one on the second finger. Two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, third. One, two, three, four, five, first. One, two, three, four, five, first finger, second finger, thumb again. So that's the cycle. Click on the first finger, thumb, click on the first finger, click on the second finger. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, second finger, two, four, five, first finger again, one. So thumb, first finger, second finger, first finger, thumb. Let me do that one time. One, two, three, four, five, 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 thumb. That's the cycle. So now I know the pattern. The click should be on the thumb, the click should be on the first finger, the click should be on the second finger. Click should be on the first finger again and the thumb. And that's what helps me keep, let, that I know that my time is aligned. So here we go. up the pattern.
it was. On and off, I noticed that my mind is wandering a little bit at times. And generally, if the mind is wandering, the time is wandering. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> if the mind is wandering, the time is wandering. Great. So what do we do? Well, we bring the mind to the time. How do we do that? We calibrate, we time tune. How do we do that? We listen for where the notes are on the click, but we not only listen auditorily, but kinesthetically feel the note aligned with the sound on the click. So I'm a little bit off. I'm gonna calibrate again with just a set of five. If I get off a couple times in a row, I find it's good just to take a nice long inhale. One of the things that I have worked through, continue to work through in my practicing, is how not to get frustrated. It's hard. Frustration is almost always the initial reaction. So how do we have a different response rather than the frustration reaction? Well, we got to catch it and then work with it. So for me, if I notice a couple times I'm off, before I start to get constricted, I just take a moment. Take a deep breath, which helps reset the nervous system. And then recalibrate back into the experience. And generally I'm not narrating it, but it's actually kind of fun.
12 minutes or so minus some chatting. So I'm feeling like, okay, I got something. I'm, I'm feeling called to add on my ring finger, my third finger. So I'm gonna keep the same idea doing these five patterns and um, back and forth. So thumb one, two, three, two, one, thumb one, two, just keep that pattern rolling back and forth. And I'm gonna begin with triplets. So now I'm bringing in a new finger that I haven't really used in a while. So I wanna get that online. So by going to triplets, I'm able to keep the tempo the same but slow down the actual movements and maybe even eighth notes, we'll see. But I'm, I'm gonna begin a triplets. We'll see what happens. Now I'm gonna speed it up without raising the metronome. To 16th notes, to four notes per click. Four notes. And I'm looking to stay really relaxed. And I'm noticing how the click is rolling, sorry, is moving with a finger, so thumb, second finger, thumb, thumb, second finger, third, it's hard to say it out loud, but I'm noticing it, let's just put it that way. stubborn sometimes and persistent cool so I'm feeling like I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with that I'm gonna add in the five pulse how I'm going to begin to align with that is not necessarily do the full finger roll, but work my way one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, and get that first finger aligned with the click. And now I'm just seeing, okay, where else does it go? First finger, thumb, First finger, second finger is the next click. Third finger is the next click. Next, second finger. Let me do that again. I was, <laughs> I left the moment to talk to this camera. I should go back to the moment. can't tell. I just want to really get aligned before I start rolling forward. So I want to get at least a little section aligned and reliable, and then I'll add on more. I was 
getting it, but then I went into a habitual pattern change. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to keep it focused, which for my triple Aquarian brain is really hard, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> spacing out and I was losing connection with how my internal awareness was focused on that alignment which sometimes happens and this is what I'm looking for just so you know um, I'm looking for a sense of where I feel really relaxed with it I'm looking for a sense where my presence and attention is with the experience and not thinking about other things and then I'm tracking the alignment ie am I rushing usually yes um, so really keeping an internal an adherence and attention to am I lining up with the click are the clicks lining up with the fingers and then after that what I'm looking to achieve is something like a meditative state where it's just happening and I'm allowing it to happen but maintaining that level of observational awareness so that witness consciousness is being present with those things the mind is keeping track of is keeping the pattern i.e. where is the click landing on the fingers what's the count but the body is moving in a natural experience which is when I know the body is beginning to feel this count of five so that's what I'm looking for and well it has been 25 minutes already just just around by the way you want a good sense of time a watch is a really important thing to have because if we're not aware of time as a meta or macro concept it's a lot it's challenged to be aware of time in a micro concept meaning rhythm and vice versa so if you have if you struggle with time management time awareness having a watch helps a lot and so does a musical practice exactly what I was thinking about in that moment and it wasn't where the count was on my fingers.
tell you what I was thinking about there, and it wasn't this. <laughs> it was related to this, but it wasn't exactly. So coming up on the 30 minute mark. Wow, that went fast. Usually, I silence my phone on practice. According to my time, that's about 30 minutes. So when I work with students, one of the things that I like to do at the end of a lesson or an experience or a little practice is uh, open up a little space for observations. What did you notice while that was happening? Because when we're doing a practice, at least myself, but I, I think humans in general, notice things. <laughs> and it's important to notice what we are noticing uh, because that's valuable information and when we go into a practice zone whether it's 30 minutes whether it's 30 seconds we're in an act of discovery we're doing something and it's not just about mastering what we're doing but it's about discovering what's happening while we're doing and gaining more awareness on that so for example uh, if i were to share if i was my own teacher i would ask uh, what did i notice what did you notice so a couple things that that i noticed during that experience I definitely noticed my mind drifting at times and 
that happens, the mind drifts. And just like anybody who's ever learned meditation, one of uh, a common phrase that we learn in meditation when, when we're teaching meditation is something like this. Uh, when you notice the mind drifting, bring it back to the practice. So whether that's a mantra practice, if, if you're keeping a mantra inside and you notice you're thinking and drifting, you just bring it back to the mantra. If you're doing yoga, bring it back to the breath. If you're playing music, bring it back to the music. So every time I notice my mind drifting, and generally how I begin to notice it drifting is because I mess up. So it's this beautiful, the music holds this beautiful awareness, this mirror for our consciousness, because if we're making mistakes generally, with a caveat that I'm going to end, but generally it's because because our mind is drifting or we're not aligned with our body. Something is out of alignment with the experience if there's a mistake. With the caveats, we might be playing at a tempo that's not possible. So that'll generally invoke a lot of mistakes just because we're not able to function at that, cap at that tempo. So that aside, I noticed my mind drifting and I would bring it back to the, the music, to the practice. Um, and I had a, a couple insights actually while that was playing. And one of the insights that, that I had is I tend to get insights when I'm practicing and playing music. There's something about practicing and playing music that at least in my experience opens up the creative channel and oftentimes gives me answers to questions that I'm having, uh, such as life moves, career moves. Uh, you know, personally, I'm in the process of, of developing more programs. So that's been a little bit of a challenge because I don't quite know how or what, or I haven't received a vision. And while I was practicing, there were moments where I got some clarity on some things, which is great. And then I realized, oh yeah. And then that, but I, I lost connection to this. So I would bring it back there. But just recognizing that it's, it's you know, it's actually a, a fruitful thing. If you're getting insight, beautiful. Um, so I noticed I, got, I noticed I got some insight. I noticed that I was able to drop in in a few moments that felt really connected. A lot of times I was ahead of the beat. I was going too fast, which is very common in the human experience uh, for a variety of reasons. We're tuned a little fast. So the active practice of, of slowing down and aligning our time is truly an internal alignment experience that we're using our body to move and to create sound that we're able to track and then have a basically a feedback loop that we can tune. So I was experiencing a sense of tuning while I was playing a, a time tuning. Um, and it felt good. It, it, it felt nice. And also while I was playing, I also had the insight of this is good <laughs> that, that this is a good uh, practice for me to practice first of all as I said in the beginning I have not been practicing all that much and to share it I was thinking while I was practicing some of the thoughts that that were taking me away from this but were quality thoughts was um, how much my students are going to benefit from um, seeing this because they had never seen me practice and um, I think it's a really uh, beautifully humbling experience to perhaps watch somebody practice and, and be taken into the experience because no matter what level we're at in our musical journey, whether it's the very beginner, whether it's the medium stage of beginning, the, the more advanced stage of beginning, the beginning stage of intermediate, the beginning stage of advanced, the advancing advanced, no matter what stage we're at. I would say the experience of practicing stays the same in a certain way, which is with the exception of the very, very beginning. But in general, what it is, is we are trying to do something that we're not quite able to do or expand on what we would like to be able to do or refine it. And, and all, of, all of those things are growth. So every act of practice is a practice of growth and we're most beginning stage uh, practicers of music get hung up is not seeing the results right away. 
and that can be demoralizing or defeating at some point. So a certain faith in the practice is really important. And when you practice long enough, and that's long enough in a micro sense, a half hour, 10 minutes, whatever it is, and in a macro sense, 35 years, uh, you do begin to see something, something change. But if our focus in that present moment is only on results, it makes the results further away. Because if our, if our focus is only on the results, we generally try to rush the process. And ironically, maybe not ironically, the, the more we rush a process, the further away the result that we really, really want goes. So practicing by really getting away from expectation, getting away from specifics that we're looking to have and deepening the actual experience of the practice and being really um, true with ourselves. Are we missing notes? Is the time not aligned? Are there mistakes? If there are, we want to notice those things without any negative self-judgment. If we notice negative self-judgment, we want to have a process that works that we work through with that. And that's what I work with my students. A lot of it is therapy, is psychotherapy, really. Um, but we want to be able to focus on deepening the actual experience. And with that is being true with ourselves. If the note's off, if we are making a mistakes, whatever that might be, which is always indicative of I'm not fully aligned. So can we be humble with that? Cool, I'm not fully aligned. Guess what? That's why I'm practicing. <laughs> you know, if you're investing money and you put $1,000 in the bank, you don't expect 10K in return the next day you know, or whatever, maybe with crypto, but you can also lose that. Anyway, that's another story. Point, point being here is that we want to be humble with our practice. And if we're not, the practice will humble us. True with our practice. Okay, I am not aligned. And then making the decision of what do I need to do to get aligned? Maybe I need to practice slower. Almost always we need to practice slower. Maybe I need more focus on the notes. Maybe what I'm doing is too complicated. There's too many things. Can I strip it down to two little bits? You saw in my practice that oftentimes the, I, when I felt out of sync with the five, I would just go back to one cycle and really tune into that. And if I had trouble doing that, I would have done something else to get that tuned in. So it's always a practice of, of deduction of complexity, i.e. increasing simplicity if we're struggling with something until we feel it's consistent and reliable. And then we either increase complexity or tempo or all of that stuff. So anyway, this has been an experiment and I hope you enjoyed it. I feel like I'll do more, so stay tuned. Thank you so much.